Good morning, Knicks Nation. Today is Monday, the 19th of April, 2021. I hope you're all healthy, COVID-free, and that your needs are being met today. I hope you had a good weekend. Happy Monday to everyone. And blessings upon those that are working in the healthcare field, trying to save life in the midst of disease and sickness and death, and working many hours to do so with people they don't know. Blessing also to those who pick up garbage for us to keep our places clean. Blessings upon those also who work in, working in deliveries, delivering goods and services to us, especially food. And we don't even realize it's being delivered like that in all types of weather, in all types of situations so that we can eat. Blessings also to those that are working to deliver boys, girls, men and women and teenagers from the clutches of sex trade operations. Blessings to them and curses upon those that support such disgusting industries. Finally, blessing on those working on behalf of the homeless. 500,000 men and women, boys and girls, children and veterans on the streets of America, sleeping on park benches, on grates, in boxes, in cars, on sidewalks. May they be blessed those that are trying to help them and those that are in that situation. And may they find shelter soon. There was two basketball games over the weekend. The New York Knicks played in New Orleans. I mean, against the Pelicans. That was last Wednesday. I'm sorry. The New York Knicks played in Dallas on Friday against the Mavericks. And they played in the Garden against the Pels yesterday. The Dallas game. Uh, I watched the replay on Saturday night of the game, saw it in its entirety. The Dallas game was basically the Julius Randle show. The Julius Randle and the New York Knicks defense show. That's what that was. The Julius Randle and the New York Knicks defense show because uh, the Knicks defense has been tremendous. Uh, it was tremendous on on Friday uh, against against the Dallas Mavericks. It was interesting because um, the Dallas Mavericks pretty much had uh, their contingent of major players with them uh, on on Friday. They had Luka Doncic, they had Kristaps Porzingis, they had Tim Hardaway, they had all of the guys that they would you know you would think they need to go to war. The main guys they had them, and the New York Knicks were missing Alec Burks, uh, who is still out due to pro, uh, COVID protocols. We don't know. Um, what the situation is or what his prognosis is or how long he's going to be out. But he was out due to COVID protocols on Friday and he was out yesterday for the same thing. Luka Doncic scored 22, K KP scored 23, Josh Risky 14, Tim Hardaway came off the bench scored 16, Dorian Finney-Smith scored 13, and we still beat because <laughs> the Knicks were all in there and it was and Julius Randle decided he was going to take over that game. You see, Dallas is Julius's hometown. Okay, that's his hometown. That's where he's from. And so uh, that's another game. So you had for earlier in the week, they play L.A., right? Who drafted him? He was That was personal, right? Then they played the Pelicans, who he played for for two seasons. That was personal. Played them in New Orleans. And then Friday, he's playing in, in Dallas. And Dallas, who beat us at the Garden previously, and that's a home for him. And he decided to go off. He scored 44 uh, against Dallas. Now, we had our usual, it was him. It's usually Julius, Rose, Burks, and um, D. Rose. You know, that's your usual contingent of scores. Burks wasn't there. D. Rose did play well. He scored 15. Um Barrett scored 24. He had an excellent game. He really did. But the star of the show was Julius Rand. 44 points. He just went off from all over the court. He just, he was just unstoppable, man. They couldn't do nothing with him. Uh, he was scoring at will. He really was. And, um, now defensively, the anchor is Nerlens Noel. And he was the anchor again. He had three blocks. Nerlens Noel, and I got to give props to the Taj Gibson. Both of them are our defensive anchors. Those guys are, they've been playing tremendous, man. And I, honestly, honestly, and I'm saying this from a guy that I really appreciate defensive basketball, um, Reggie Bullock, Nerland Zewell, and Taj Gibson should be recognized for the, for the level of defense that they've been playing this year in terms of 
all NBA defensive teams. They should be on one of those three all NBA defensive teams, all three of those guys, because the Knicks are number one in several categories on defense this year and number three in defensive efficiency overall. So, you know, and only the Lakers and the Sixers uh, are ranked higher. And the Sixers have the guy on their team and Ben Simmons that everybody's talking, which, you know, he probably will be defensive player of the year. So only those two teams are ranked higher defensively than the Knicks. Okay. And so he, the Knicks and the Knicks were 23rd, 23rd in defensive efficiency a year ago. So those three guys need to be recognized because they've all been playing, especially now uh, for each individual one. Now, now Bullock, you know, this is his first season coming back from the neck problem. Remember, he had a neck problem. For half of last season. This is his first full healthy season. And man, he's playing tremendous defense. He plays, he always guards the other team's top scorer for us, you know. And then, of course, New Orleans Noel, been, which since Mitchell Robinson went down, rim protection on the highest level. And then Taj has just been playing ball, period. Rim protection, defense, moving his feet, getting key offensive boards. He had, um, he, let's see, what did he do? Taj Gibson on Friday. Well, he didn't get he didn't get any boards Friday, but he played great defense. I was surprised he didn't get any boards, but he played great defense. Noel had five offensive rebounds on Friday. Barrett had three. Barrett also is such a good all round player. You know where you need him, he's going to show up. And he had three offensive boards, eight total boards. Noel had ten boards, three blocks. He was a defensive gem on Friday, man. And and that leads the whole defense. And they played. Tremendous defense, man. And so, uh, even though Dallas scored 109 points, but what was interesting, which is going to carry over to the next game, Luka Doncic was John running his mouth in Bullock's face, right? And you seen Bullock tell him, get out of my face. You know, you ain't, you know, he said something like, you ain't nothing, get out of my face. You know, and that made Doncic more upset. Didn't help their game, but. I think that carried over because if you watch the game against the Pelt, it seemed like Bullock was just a little bit more aggressive. Like he scored a, like, okay, so he scored 11 against uh, Dallas. You know, it was four of 10, two of six from three. He wasn't tremendous, but he played tremendous defense. He always does. Um, but when he came out against the Pelicans on Sunday, there was a bit more aggression to his game. Uh, and he scored 15 against the Pels, but it seemed like, uh, at the end of that game, you know, in the fourth, he started really, you know, and he, and he, he hit three, what is it? I think he hit, I think he hit three, three pointers against the Pelicans, right? But they were big, man. Of course, the one that sent the game in overtime, one of them in overtime, but he hit a couple of mid range. Also, um, that, that were, uh, you know, he, he was knocking them down. He was six of eight yesterday. He scored 15. His usual all round game where he plays great defense as well. He's going to be resigned. There's no question. He's coming back either as a bench piece or as a starter. He's going to be resigned, but he needs to be considered for his defensive prowess this year. He's been playing tremendous defense. Him and Nerlens Noel and Taz Gibson. Tremendous defense. Julius Scott, 33. Bullock, 15. Noel, 12. RJ fouled out in the fourth quarter. Got 18. But of course, to me, another star of this game was D. Rose. Now, we saw vintage uh, Eric Bledsoe yesterday. We saw Phoenix Suns Eric Bledsoe yesterday because he was going off. But we also, we counted that with vintage Derrick Rose because Derrick Rose, ooh, man, man. Today, the best finisher in the NBA is, uh, in my opinion, is Kyrie Irving in terms of finishing at the rim at the guard spot. He's the best finisher in the NBA, right? But one of the best finishers of all time is Derrick Rose. They just, he really is one of the best finishers. And he's added a jump shot. He's added a three point. He was two of four from three yesterday, nine of 17. He's become much more efficient in his, in his later stage of career, but much more efficient in terms of offensive prowess. And, um, man, five assists, 23 points. That was huge for us. He was huge for us, including the, the, the assist that led to the tying basket in the fourth quarter to bring us into overtime. Uh, what can you say, man? The, the, and the Nick defense is, was, again, 
even though they let Pelicans get 112 points. Now, Zion was a problem. Zion is a problem, man. There's no question. It's not that he's going to be a problem. <laughs> he's already a problem. John, it's like Luca. Luca's not going to be a problem. Luca Doncic is a problem. And Zion Williamson is a problem. He is rough, man. This cat is rough. And he doesn't even have a jump shot yet. And he doesn't force, even though he doesn't have a J, he doesn't force his jump shot. He was 0 of 3 yesterday from three point line, but he was 13 of 23 overall. So he doesn't force, he, he plays with a very good IQ. He doesn't force anything. And his force, speaking of force, going to the basket, <clears throat> getting, he had five offensive rebounds, even in the NBA. You know, remember a couple of summers ago when he slung, you know, Kevin Knox around like he was a rag doll. Now you look at it, that's no shame on Kevin Knox. Cause Zion does that to everybody, man. <laughs> I mean, that's just, yesterday he was a man among boys on the offensive glass sometimes. Him and Steven Adams. That was making me concerned because as I said, man, you win the offensive game, offensive glass game, you can win the game. And they were. And they, in fact, how many did they have? At the end of the game, they ended up with, the, the Pels ended up with 20, 20 offensive rebounds. And the Knicks had 13. That, you know, that usually spells trouble. But, you know, the Knicks defense was, was tremendous. They fought all the way. And of course, we had very good scoring. We had one, two, three, four, five players in double figures led by Julius is 33. And then, Derrick Rose is 23, RJ Barrett's 18, Bullock come through. Like I said, we, we usually get RJ, Julius, and D Rose scoring. If we can get a, you know, a fourth guy, and, and it's usually a different guy, like usually it's been Burke recently, but it was Bullock yesterday. And, you know, and he did his thing. He, he really helped us at the end. So, uh, and then we saw, you know, quickly was quiet again. He was quiet again. He played key minutes though. He played 22 minutes. He played key minutes in the, in, in the end of the game. Um, Frank Nilakina played his defense. He was there. And so was uh, Kevin Knox. We had a Kevin Knox signing yesterday. Uh, and of course, Obi was there for six minutes. So the bench really contributed also. Uh, so, you know, what you going to say, man? I mean, the Knicks are rolling. They've run seven, uh, six straight. They won six straight, man. They won six straight. I mean, they haven't won six straight since 2014. That 2014 was the year Carmelo was hurt. And then all of a sudden the Knicks started and then, and then they were playing really badly the first part of the year. And then after the all star break, they got fire and they, they caught the, the rhythm. And I think they won eight straight. I think they won eight straight and they went 37 and 45. They were trying to get that eighth spot and they barely got missed it. Then of course, you know, um, Mr. Dolan hires Phil Jackson. He cleans house, and that's all she wrote. Not the rest is history, as they say. But um, that's the last time the Knicks won six straight. And they were on a roll. That March and April of 2014, they were on a roll. They were, you know, they started, they got in their rhythm. Melo got in his rhythm. And that's when um, really um, uh, Woodson was playing Melo at the four, uh, full time, you know, and he was killing. So, yeah. But now, this is a different team. This is Randall's team right now. And uh, this is the defense right now. And, man, whew, we ready to go. So, the next, this is, we're in the midst of a home stretch. But it's a tough home stretch. It's not an easy home stretch for the Knicks. So, we just beat New Orleans for the second time. And that's no joke. New Orleans is no joke. The only thing about New Orleans is that they're young. You know, Brandon Ingram had 19 yesterday. Um Williamson, I already mentioned. They got Kyra Lewis coming up, Jackson Hayes coming up. Uh, they, you know, they're a young team. Man. They're a very young team, and they're going to get better. The, the cornerstones are Ingram and Williamson, you know, and I think they're going to end up giving Kyra Lewis the keys to the car pretty shortly. I mean, I think they're stuck with Bledsoe for a minute, but Kyra Lewis, you're going to see, especially if Ball leaves, which I think he will, um, you're going to end up with Kyra Lewis running that team. And he's going to do good. I, I think Kyra Lewis is a very talented kid. And he's going to be a tremendous NBA pro. He's very young. I think he's still a teenager. So, you know, give him some time. Um, but they're going to be good. So that was no joke that we beat them twice. That was not, that was no light thing. You know, we did good beating them twice. And then Dallas had been playing good ball against everybody, you know, in the West. Luka was on fire for, for, for a minute. And uh, the Knicks did their thing. That's the thing that I like. 
Dallas was beating some good teams in the West. They were 30 and 24 when we met them Friday. They're really good team, right? The Nick defense shut that mess down. I mean, you know what I mean? That, that shows you how good our defense is. Okay. So when it wants to play. So, and they've been playing consistently. So this is no joke. And the Knicks now, um, we have, let's see, we're playing, we're playing, um, they are playing Charlotte on Wednesday. Playing Charlotte on Wednesday. Again, that's no joke. Now, Charlotte is missing Ball. They're missing Lonzo Ball. And they're missing Gordon Hayward. Two major players for them. Especially, you know, both of them. I mean, I was, I was going to say especially Hayward, but both of them. So Hayward is out and Ball is out. But they have still been balling out, no pun intended, because... Miles Bridges have been getting those minutes and he's been, he's been doing thing. And of course, Scary Terry has really been playing really good this whole season. So there, this is not going to be an easy game. And it's, it's the first game of a back to back. But good thing about this back to back is they're both at home, but you're playing Charlotte on Tuesday. You're playing Atlanta on Wednesday and Atlanta happens to be the four C or at least tied for the four C. In the East right now, Atlanta's tied for the fourth seed in the East, um, tied with Boston. And Boston has also, Boston right now, right now, as we're sitting here today on Monday, the 20th, the 19th of April, the Boston Celtics and the New York Knicks are the two hottest teams in the NBA right now. Um, the Boston Celtics has also won six straight. The Boston Celtics are eight and two in their last 10. The Knicks are seven and three in their last 10. Okay, both have won six straight. So and and so at this point, um, Atlanta and Boston are tied at thirty-one and twenty-six for the fourth seed. The Knicks are a half game out at thirty-one and twenty-seven. And by the way, if you recall, I did say the Knicks were going to win at least thirty-one games this year. I I did say that, and and we reached thirty-one. Look at that. And there's still that we we've paid fifty-eight games, which means there's still fourteen games left. Okay. So I'm telling you right now, the Knicks are going to win at least five of these last 14, which means they're going to go at least five and nine, which means they would end up at least 36 and 36. Okay. <laughs> so I said 31 and I also said it's probability that they're going to outperform that. And I think they will. So here they are already sitting at 31. The Knicks are in sole possession of the sixth seed right now. Sole possession. Half game out of the fourth seed. We got a game and a half ahead of Miami, who is the seventh seed. And we got a two full game lead on Charlotte. So this week is very big. There's two games this week. The Charlotte game and the Atlanta game are very huge for us. Because we're playing our direct opponents in, in the standings. Okay, so uh, we got to win this game against Charlotte. Charlotte just beat somebody yesterday. Again, Miles Bridges has been playing his butt off. He's getting the opportunity to start and he's taking full advantage of it. And so, uh, <clears throat> we got, we got to come ready to play against Charlotte. Good thing is that we don't have to travel anywhere. So we're, we're at home for an extended time. The Knicks are going to be home for until next week, I think. Um, the Knicks are going to be home until next week. Yes. Yeah, so we got, we got our string. We just played <clears throat> the Pels at home. So it's the first of a string of six home games that the Knicks have. So, um, yeah. So, yeah. It's good to look at the Knicks schedule and see all those green W's show up, man. Wow, it's pretty. Anyway, so we play in Charlotte, Atlanta, Toronto, Phoenix, Chicago at home. Okay? All of these are hungry teams. Some of them are really good hungry teams. And so Charlotte's going to be hungry for a win. Um, one game at a time to take care of that business in Charlotte. And that would also help our cause, right? So, this game is uh, tomorrow night. I believe it's 7.30. What time is that game? Yep, it's 7.30 tomorrow night in the garden. Then they, you know, play Atlanta after that. But we'll deal with that one game at a time, y'all. So let's deal with this Charlotte situation. Uh, they're coming to visit tomorrow night. We got to handle business. See, even though the Knicks have won six straight, I don't want to look at it as winning seven straight. Let's take one game at a time. This is a win we need. The Charlotte game is the game we need to focus on. Pass is the past, good or bad. We not in the future yet. Let's deal with the Charlotte game, right? So let's win this Charlotte game. And that gives us the 32 wins. 
would put pressure on Atlanta and Boston as we're only a half game behind them. I think they're both idle Tuesday. So if we can win this game, we'd be in a three-way tie for the fourth seat. Okay, and then, yeah, so that's good. Let's do that. So the Knicks are playing some tremendous ball. Randall is on a tear. We're in the nice rhythm right now. Defense is top notch. We're playing 90s level New York Knicks defense right now. We're playing Patrick Ewing era, Charles Oakley era, you know, Xavier McDaniel era New York Knicks defense right now. That's what we're doing. Under Pat Riley and then Jeff Van Gunn. That's the defense they're playing. They're playing at a very high level. As a matter of fact, I'm going to predict some. If they continue to play like this type of defense all the way through the playoffs, people are going to look back on this season and say, man, remember when the Knicks played that type of defense? <laughs> it's going to be like that. Like, I hope they continue this going forward in future years, as long as Tom Thibodeau is the coach and he has the full support of the front office, which he does at this point, and he has good assistants like a Johnny Bryant, like a Kenny Payne. Who knows how long we're going to be able to keep Kenny Payne because they were already trying to poach them from us. You know, they they got a hold of Woodson already. So, you know, we still got Kenny Payne. We still got Johnny Bryant. So we got a tremendous coaching staff, a developmental coaching staff. If we can keep all that in place, we can keep this type of situation going forward. So I hope they do. But next game is Charlotte. Let's get this win, baby. I hope Burks is back for that game. I don't know. You know, the last two times they brought this COVID thing, it was Frank and he was out for about a month. And then it was... It was uh, Rose, and he was out for like three weeks. And then he was like minutes restriction until like two games. Last two games, he played over 30 minutes. Before that, it was locked down at 25 minutes. And I think it was due to his win, you know, because the COVID affects your win. It affects your lungs, respiratory system. So um, he it seemed like it slowed him down to me, in my opinion. But then all of a sudden, the last two games, the Dallas game and his last Pels game, he was back to his old self. Played 35 minutes yesterday. So... Uh, we need a win against Charlotte. You can't look back. We got to take care of this business. That's all I can say. Let's just take care of this business. The Knicks are in the playoffs hunt. They're not officially a playoff team. They haven't clinched the playoff spot yet, but that's coming. But they are definitely in the hunt for the top six seeds. Okay, there's a, there's a battle going on for the top six. The Knicks are there right now. Okay, and to say that, and we're in April, <laughs> that's pretty good, isn't it, for the New York Knicks, right? So Tom Thibodeau has definitely got to be considered coach of the year. Um, Julius, listen, one thing should be for sure. Julius Randle's most improved player in the NBA, for sure. Okay, then we don't even need to discuss that. Done. Okay, and and also Nerlens Noel, Reggie Bullock, and Taj Gibson need to be considered all be NBA defensive players this year. I don't care if it's first, second, or third team. They need to be on one of because all three of them are playing for the third best rated defensive team in basketball. Shalom.